Oxford is one of the world's top universities, attracting the best students from over 140 countries. Many of the world's most famous scientists and inventors have studied here. The spin-off of all this academic excellence is to be found in Oxford Science Parks. The most famous of these is the Harwell Science and Innovation Campus. Since the 1940s, it's been a global powerhouse of research into atomic and molecular matter, supercomputing, as well as space and material science. That heritage means that today 200 companies and 5,000 people work on the site. It's a perfect location for a world-leading company working at the forefront of new technology. A technology that's at the heart of everyone's working and leisure time. So what is this technology? Battery charging. So many devices, so many batteries, all need charging and recharging again and again. Yet the more of them we use, the longer it takes to charge them up. And the life of lithium batteries is short really short. And then you have to dispose of it. Hello, I'm David McClelland and today I'm at the Harwell campus to talk to a UK-based company that claims to be at the forefront of developing a fast charge solution that lasts and lasts. That company, Zap and Go. Stephen Voller, thank you very much for uh, meeting me today. Tell me, what exactly is Zap and Go? It's a new business that's making replacement batteries the next generation of batteries to the ones we have today and our goal is to produce something that replaces the current generation of lithium based batteries which is something that charges much more quickly and is much safer. And what's the history of the company? Well I founded the company in 2013 with some intellectual property from the University of Oxford and the idea was to use an advanced form of carbon to replace the lithium so we could produce something that was faster charging and safer. Advanced form of carbon, are you talking about graphene? Graphene is part of it, but it's really a nanocarbon, an advanced porous structure that we use of nanocarbons and some graphene. So give me a 101 on the problem with the current lithium technologies that we're using in smartphones and all kinds of rechargeable devices. The trouble with them is they're based on a very volatile substance, which is lithium. And the reason they have to be charged slowly is that if you charge them quickly, the lithium could catch fire. So much of the technology around our phones and laptops and electric cars is designed to slow down the charging of the batteries to protect the lithium inside. What is different about what Zap and Go does in comparison to the heritage battery technologies? Well there are uh, fast charging devices around capacitors or supercapacitors as they're sometimes called and the industry standard for those is a device like this which is typically a round cylindrical type uh, product and now clearly if you want to get uh, something inside a mobile phone there's an immediate challenge uh, with that. So the first thing that we did is we developed a flat or pouch cell uh, so that we could change the format so it would fit more readily into a range of different products. This is our Generation 2 technology, uh, which is a little bit wider than you need for a mobile phone. But what we can do with the technology is that we can put it in things like this, which is a power bank product, and this charges in just five minutes. Stephen Voller, thank you very much. Thank you. Simon Harris, tell me about your role here at Zap and Go. I am the investment director in the first case. My job is to raise the money and secure the future of the company with financial backing. I'm also the marketing director to help drive the company forward into its chosen markets. So what does success look like for you? Not just of Zap and Go, but in terms of your role here. How will you be deemed to have been successful? Well, this is the third company I've helped to found and build. And the success measurement for me would be an outcome, an exit, if you like, for the investors that I have brought into the company, a successful transformation of this from a small company into a large and safe place. What challenges specifically do you have with Zap and Go, where it's at right now and where it's going to? Every young technology company has got many mountains to climb. And in this particular case, we're challenging and adding to the incumbent lithium-ion technology. 
the challenge we face is to extend and increase the power of lithium into a whole range of products, the mobile phone being only one of them. We've talked about the scooter, the e-bike, the vacuum cleaner, the drill, the, even onto the electric car. A whole range of battery-powered products, huge numbers of them, all suffer from the common limitation of lithium-ion, which is the slowness with which it charges. So our marketing task is to get our product adopted by the owners of these brands uh, as a supplement or a replacement to that lithium. Isn't it frustrating a bit that the product isn't available right now? You want something you can sell right now that customers can see the value in, investors can see the value in immediately. Every week we get calls. How much is it? When can we have it? We've been to exhibitions, we've been absolutely crowded out by interested parties wanting to license it, to make it, to buy it, to sell it. Uh, the fact is that only a year ago was when we first raised serious amounts of money that I'm not frustrated at all because our momentum is what buoys us up. I can't think of anyone I know who hasn't at some point suffered from a flat battery crisis. So it's easy to see how technologies like this, like Zap and Go, are only going to play an increasingly important role in our everyday lives, particularly as those lives become ever more reliant on mobile devices like these.